I found this sitting in my stash of sardine cans ready to eat. Hoya brand. Sardines in olive oil. Not sure if I've had these before. I don't think so. Looking on the box, they are from Morocco, so they're going to be the large pilchard types, which are not my preference. But judging by the label, as you can see, they are uh, the ones with skin uh, and look nice and wrinkly and maybe have some scales on it. But lately, I've not been finding too much of the scales. So I'm going to give these a try. If they're not fantastic, then I have a little bit of a plan to bump them up a little bit. But hopefully, they're just going to be uh, spectacular. We'll see how that goes. As usual, I'll give you some really good prints of the box all around different sides at the end of the video. So you can take a look for yourself if there's any details you really want to see. So here we go with Hoya brand sardines and olive oil. First of all, the box is uh, not the reclosable kind. As you know, I really have this bug about having things that are reclosable. I'm just a saver and I like to have lots of to put my fun stuff in. Ooh. Well, so far, I'm not real impressed with the, bleh, the dried snot that's on the can. So, Hoya, I think you need to take note here. Maybe your packaging cleanliness needs to be up to notch. There's some kind of bird poop on the side there. Uh, just a little bit, but you know, that one right there doesn't look good. And the can is all dented and uh, mushed up. Not bad, of course. It's not something that I would turn away from, but still, with these type of cans, as strong and robust as they are, it takes a little bit of misuse to put any kind of a dent in them. So, there you have that part. It's the aluminum colored ones, which tells me cheaper brand. I don't know if that really has anything to do with it at all, but in my mind, aluminum is cheaper than brass or gold, so the color um, may be an indicator. like it's not up to the expiration date or the recommended use by date. Not that that matters. So I'm going to give you a close-up shot of opening and pouring the oil out. Sometimes the appearance of that oil uh, leaves something to be desired. I like to open it just a little ways so the chunks don't fall out, but the oil does. Now that don't look too bad. It doesn't look like a large amount of unnecessary byproduct mixed into the oil. I'm fine with that. Looks good. Boy, that choo-choo train's really having a problem. Must be lots of traffic interfering along the track. One thing I forgot here was my paper towel. Well, let me pull that out of the oil. Dry it off a little bit there. By the way, I've, by the way, I've backed off on my stance on consuming the oil in the can, particularly if it is olive oil, because olive oil is generally accepted to be okay for you to consume in a little bit larger amounts than seed oils or peanut oil or heavier stuff like that. Uh, so I think that there's actually a really good use for this. I eat a lot of salads with oil and vinegar. And what's the oil? Typically the oil is olive oil. You know, if you wanted to pour this on a salad, or even consume it out of the can. It's probably a lot better for you than swapping a piece of toast with all kinds of butter or bacon fat or something like that. So I'm, I'm coming around. Thank you for your suggestions on the comments. You do have some influence on me and I do read all the comments. By the way, if you'd do me a favor and tap the uh, like button down there if you like this, it helps me to know that people really do want to see more of these videos. I would greatly appreciate that. Thank you. 
let's finish taking the cap off this. You notice how I pinch my lips and grit my teeth all the time? It's because a couple times I've had bad experience, like this thing flying off and shooting the oil all over my face, or, you know, it crinkling up and having some issues with safety. So I'm always like, mm -hmm. at least I don't go on. Some people stick their tongue out when doing that. I think that's more order. Look at that. There they are. Silvery skinned. You can see the ends, it's the dark meat that comes out the end because that's where the lateral line is of the fish and all the nerves and the fat resides and all the all the little every one of those scales on the side of the fish has a little connecting string of a nerve that goes to the lateral line down the center of the fish. We'll have to pull these out now and today what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just dump them right out on the tray. Hey, that was a good clean dump. They all fell right out and lined up, lined up and they look okay. And there's the resulting empty casket. Surprises. Pretty much just like it looks on the box. Hey, look at that. No false advertising here. Except they show a few more on the box than they do in the actual tin. But it's full. You can see that this these do have scales. It's quite, quite a lot of them too. Yep, taking them off though breaks, breaks the fish apart. Now that's not advertising at all. In fact, we'll take those right off the tray and put it back in the oil plate. Even some of this real redness here. You can clean them up pretty good if you want to remove some of that stuff. We'll pull out my typical saltine crackers. So once you get them out laid on the plate like that, and I think I'm going to pass on that. That looks like the stomach. I'm gonna see if that lightens up the harsh taste of these pill charring types. Because right there you have nothing but a fillets. Yeah, the skin and the scales on the backside, a few little stray bones in there. Meaningless, really. But that looks, that looks pretty good. Not a strong smell. Pretty good. Pretty good. I think dividing them up, like I just showed you, makes a little bit milder experience here. Let's throw that one over the top. Just show you that, yep, it still has all the scales, but I didn't notice any of them. Scales were on the bottom side.
Now there's that one with the big pile of scales that I scraped off. You'll see if that's noticeable. And I said before, scales are good for you because they're full of carcinogen. Right. They're not. Thanks for reminding me. Not carcinogen. They're full of collagen. That's what it is. Collagen is really good for your skin, fingernails, and all that kind of stuff. So if you can get over the eating of scales, it'll probably do you good. Really, really not noticeable. Well, let's take a big chunk. Okay, so this is a full body chunk and you can see it's got some of the innards still intact. Bone, scales, skin, no tails. Can't tell if it smells any different. It actually seems to smell a little bit milder on the hoof than it does uh, cut up into segments. Notice something. It makes a difference if you bite into the fish itself first or bite around it on the cracker. Biting right down onto the fish seems to squeeze the essence of the taste and flavor and the whole experience. Mm -hmm. Stop and go. Mm. Yeah, I'm gonna try stepping it up a notch. We're going to use one of my favorite enhancers, Everything Bagel. Everything Bagel, I don't know what you call this, herbs or additive. We'll see what this does. Okay. Now, this one has, I see what that was I took out. You can't see it, they're very small. This is roll or eggs. I am not a fan of that. It just doesn't add anything pleasant to the experience. So I will remove the eggs. Let those go hatch over there in that pool of olive oil. I'll put a very nice, aesthetically pleasing fillet of sardine right there. And now we are going to add the everything bagel mixture and some of it actually is getting on there and you see it looks like plenty of herbs spices seeds and flavor right there as well as crunch again if you want to get away from eating the bones or uh, the, the experience of the bones which is really minuscule but if you're really sensitive put this everything bagel on here because it takes the place of the crunch all right, I'm expecting big things here. Placement is key. That's not right. 90 degrees. There we go. That's right. Immediately, upon entry, the everything bagel gets an effervescence of aroma, which adds to your taste. There's garlic in there. Sesame seeds, onions. Mm. This really makes it work. Wow. You know there are ooh, there's more eggs in there. Don't want your all your eggs in one basket. I'm gonna take the bones off. Not that I'm squeamish or I have too much calcium in my diet. I do believe though. Those do get a little bit in the way. Of the total bouquet of flavor. And I'm gonna finish this last piece off again. 
with everything bagel mix on top. I just uh, make sure I can get enough of that. That is excellent. Proper positioning. It's like when the dentist put that x-ray thing, you have to get it just right, and you sit there and gag for five minutes. Oh, wait a minute. That one didn't take. Let's do it again. That was a lot better than that. Man, it's good. That is just way good. There, boy. Why is it my wife never has such a problem? I eat stuff. She eats the, you know, stuff that's crumbly and everything, and it just no problem. I eat anything, and I wear it. It's all over my pants, my shirts, all over the, the table. I try really hard. No, well, maybe that's not exactly right. There you go. There you don't go. There you have it. Hoya brand sardines and olive oil. I would say these are excellent and the price is way down there so it's a good investment as well. But if you like a little bit boosted level of flavor, add the everything bagel mix and let me know down in the comments what you think. Until next time, thanks for watching.